Hello, my brothers and sisters. Hello, my friends. I'm Reverend Dr. Juliana Taylor, and I've been doing a series on my book, Becoming Who You Already Are, Your Holy Identity. And tonight, I'm going to impart some of the reading from chapter 10, very important chapter, entitled, Who You Are Is Not Broken. Don't fix it. Amen. This is the fuel to the imposter's goal to get you to display an unspoken confession, a confession of actions to put your faith in all its lies. When you fix it, you're agreeing with it, that you are the identity of the flesh. It strives, strives, to create a demonstration of doubt by having you agree with a belief that you need to do something, that you do not have what you need, and you have to employ works to get it. Now, the truth of the matter is, at this time in the church, the church is in the complete idolatry of works. There are more works in the church demonstrating the flesh fixing themselves than there are just people running around living their lives, you know, amen, moving on. Hallelujah. There's more faith in just moving on and not fixing yourself than spending your whole time looking at your generational principalities and all this, hello, look at me, fix me, I'm broken, I'm broken. I'm going to debunk a belief that the church has been expressing recently in songs. They are broken by God. <laughs> Everybody is being broken by God. But you are not being broken by God, my friends. You came into Christ because you were broken. Think back. Amen. And if you have not made the translation from flesh to spirit, it might be because you haven't laid the idols down that you are being deceived by the imposter of your identity to fixing it, the old self, the old creature, which is an idol. A fixing of the old creature is bowing to an idol. Hallelujah. Every time you agree in your mind and condone any thinking with this fix-it mentality, you are shutting down your own heart, your own precious heart. You're, you're closing your life force. You're compromising, and you can't even compromise because you're the spirit person, 1 John 3, 9. The spirit cannot compromise, but you are indulging a deception. Hallelujah. You have been deceived. Amen. In the very depths of your unique heart is your holy identity, with all the love, authority, power, divine health, divine consciousness, and all the revelations that you will ever need. Divine consciousness is you're not being brought down. You're aware you are not your body. You're not fixing it. You are hearing from God, and you are walking by faith. Amen. When you walk by faith, you are going to have a divine consciousness because at the end of the day, that's how we get there. <laughs> the, the divine consciousness is already in your spirit, the mind of Christ, amen. And how we get there is by walking by faith after the spirit, taking territory back, walking in the spirit, amen, by faith. What faith does is it takes territory back that the flesh has seduced it into bowing. And God's response to that, and your own spirit's response to that, is resurrection power. It's, it's just the way it is. That's what faith does. And only faith. Hallelujah. You know, revelation can do it. You hear something, you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know for me, I was healed a lot by revelation. But there always came a point where I had to demonstrate. What do you mean, Reverend Julie? had to demonstrate. Step out by faith and enforce that healing, agreeing with God and, and, and showing the flesh. <laughs> I'm, I'm demonstrating that revelation. I'm not just hearing it. 
I'm not just pontificating it. I'm not just uh, rehearsing it. I, I'm not just having it in my head. Amen. I'm not just sprouting it around, giving affirmations about it. I am walking in it. And that is when fear will bow to you, the spirit person. And fear will not bow before that is calling your bluff. It's in there. It's, you will exercise fear by your demonstration of faith. That's just the way God is. Amen. God says, show me the faith. Hallelujah. Let me see it. Let me see it. Hallelujah. This holy identity that is inside you is the roadmap to your destiny, perfect relationships and connections, your purpose and your prosperity. Everything you need is already there. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart. He has set the world in your heart. You got it, the whole world. You got the whole world in your heart. Ecclesiastics 3.11. That was a freebie from the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Your spirit and heart know this. That you have a world, that you got it. Your spirit and heart knows you got it. And can become oppressed and will become oppressed at any misidentification. Actually, that is the very definition of spiritual oppression. This feels like confusion and creates a doubt, feeling of having lost your way, out of purpose and clarity, just confused. This is deception received. Disagree vehemently, vehemently. When I say vehemently in the spirit, that means with your righteous indignation. Yes, holy anger. Hallelujah. You have been had. You have been played. And you need to respond vehemently with righteous indignation. You gotta feel it. When you feel it, you will have the power to oppose it. If you could, oh yes, Reverend Juliana, I'm going to speak to it. Yes, I, I told it. Mm -mm -mm. You got to know, how dare you? How dare you think that I'm going to fix you? I'm outraged at your insinuation. That I'm not looking at you. Get, it, get the ends. Amen. Hallelujah. Your heart has repressed anger about this abandonment of its purpose and integrity. You're the guard of your heart. If you abandon your heart, if you abandon your watch, if you don't take care of yourself, if you're not true to yourself, your heart has been abandoned. Amen. We've all been there. Gee, I've abandoned mine, and you've abandoned yours. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But you know, we will sometimes do that. But to know what we're doing and to know why we're not feeling good or why we feel grief, it makes it so much easier to come back and not blame yourself. Because you want to look at that flesh with its created an abandonment, a passive relinquishment of your guard from you. And you want to say, hey, I'm on to you. I know what you did. And it's not going to happen again. You have to feel angry. And you will not condemn me for your behavior. Amen. It's the important thing. Hallelujah. Your heart knows that this is a bow when it's abandoned. And a bow makes it difficult to connect to God. It's an idol to hear and to be led. If you're not connecting, if you're not hearing and you're not being led, there's an idol going on. And you can just simply acknowledge that and lay the idol down and make a big deal because this is going to go on through life. Oh, I'm an idol. I'll call everybody. And lay the idol down. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, get more power. Hallelujah. This is often the time that the imposter might come in with a second punch and speak a little doubt into your heart. Now you've, you've bowed. You had a moment, you weren't present, this thing has come in, and now it's blaming you, it's disconnected you. Amen. You received it. 
And now it's going to speak a little doubt into your heart. Now that second punch might sound something like this. Where's God? Where's God? Where's God? Where's God? Where's God? Amen. I've been there. Don't fix. Oppose. There is nothing you can do. Nothing to get more of you. Because your identity is complete and secured in God. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus. You can only agree and stand that you have it. Amen. You are a divine spirit and able to oppose the imposter. When you are opposing counterfeit consciousness, you are automatically separate from it. Amen. When this happens, the minute that you stand up and say, when what happens? When you're feeling confused, when you're feeling lost, when you're feeling doubt, when you're feeling shut down, when it's trying to tempt you to fix it. Amen. I am not you. I am my holy identity. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am the image and likeness of God. I already have everything I need. I have nothing to work out with you. You talk directly at its rhetoric. Directly in the moment is where your power is. Because when you speak to it, when it speaks, you are shutting it up and busting its con. Hallelujah. You certainly are. Word for word, you will feel it bow to you. You will feel fear literally bow. You will feel the bow. I'm talking about a, a, a literal bow. You will feel it inside like a, mm hmm Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's who I am, imposter, the new creation. I am fixed. I am fixed. I have become new. I am redeemed. And I'm not buying your story. I don't have your problems. I am free in the perfect law of liberty. A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. And therefore, I disagree with you. And I stand against you. You don't divide me. I am one not receiving any part of you. Hallelujah. This is my kingdom, and you have no legal right to it. You have no legal right to it. Hallelujah. I've been redeemed, translated from your kingdom by the blood of Jesus. No legal right. This is a done deal, my not needing to fix you. This is my vessel, my kingdom, my body, and my life, and you will not speak into my heart. There is no power imposter but the power of God, and you do not exist without my agreement. I call your bluff. Amen. You do not trigger me. I am not available for your fears, familiar spirits, victimizations, condemnation, doubt, or self-exaltation. I am going to go into my next new moment by grace. I am going into my purpose and destiny. I don't bow. I do not bow. You will bow to me. This round belongs to the spirit. Hallelujah. And everything you have been holding back on me, imposter, every desire of my heart that you have procrastinated and talked me out of, I'm stepping into that territory. And as I do that, you will decrease and my power over you will increase by faith. This little talk is just a talk. I'm letting you know. Back up. Because I am going to demonstrate who I am by faith. Hallelujah. Remind and retrieve. The minute you remind the imposter's counterfeit consciousness that you are you and that it is not you, you have created a separation right then and there. You're separate. You know, often people say to me, well, I don't know how to do that. I don't know really how to stand up and be bold and come against the imposter. Well, the minute that you do it, you see you are you and it is it. That's it. That's how you do it. Excuse me. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. I know what you're trying to do. And it's over. The generational buck stops here. And I will do the talking. What you got? Let me hear.
Amen. Hallelujah. If you can't do that now, that's okay. That means you're so oppressed, beloved, from listening to this, from bowing your heart's desires, from not being true to yourself, that you may have to step up, step out, and take a little territory and demonstrate. And that conversation, the ability to have that authority, will come to you. I guarantee you. Amen. God has ways to do this. You are not being left out of your authority. Don't believe that con job. I don't know how. Oh, there's nothing to know here. <laughs> you do it by faith. I'm not you. Mm. Hallelujah. You get nasty. Don't be nice. Don't be nice. Being nice is a very bad sign. Amen. Tell it off. Hallelujah. Think about everything is taken from you. Your heart's desires. Hallelujah times you've been pushed back in despair. For what? There's no devil. It's this thing living in you, conning you. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, when you go word for word and you disagree in the moment, you have gone from victim mentality to spiritual reality. You are taking your power back from evil. Amen. If you are able to impose the imposter with emotion, with your authentic righteous indignation, you will experience a change of consciousness. You will go from flesh whoosh, to spirit. Right then and there, by your own authority, by your own authority, you have successfully divided us under soul and spirit in your life, your days. They are about to change. You are now a warrior. The imposter wants you to believe that you are a lowly victim without any divine rights on this earth. This is a counterfeit mentality, the exact opposite of the truth. You know, the imposter uses the exact, exact, you could find it by seeing the opposite that it's saying, just go the opposite, exact opposite. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The root of this is sin consciousness, exactly that from which you have been redeemed. Amen. These contrary positions, flesh versus spirit, and sin consciousness versus redemption versus righteousness consciousness versus the perfect law of liberty versus the law of sin and death. Get these contrasts. These opposing forces are in eternal opposition. Not just in your life. In eternal opposition. Amen. Sin consciousness was conquered at the cross of Christ. Do not allow the imposter to use you, you, for its voice. It does not have a voice of its own. Without your acquiescence, without your agreement, it is powerless. Wow. You're going to start to do a lot of talking, aren't you? Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus more primal, authentic power to, to speak, to speak to the imposter. Words you may choose to speak to the imposter. I'm giving you some examples of how this conversation is literally going to go. Amen, we're doing it right now. Hey, imposter, I think my thoughts, I choose my words, and I will be the only speaker in my vessel. I do not agree with you. I identify your trap. I know exactly what you're trying to do. Oppress me, put me down, control me. And I do not agree with you or any of your mind control. It infuriates me. I identify your trap. Now shut up. Now you have appropriated your divine spiritual tude, your DST, Divine spiritual tude. Amen. This defiance goes a long way in the spirit. This is your righteous indignation, and it's going to be hard to be righteous without it. Amen. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. But you're righteous. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. So this is a natural move for you. Amen. It is primal, authentic authority and power. This innate power with your spiritual sword goes all the way up to dominion on earth. The kingdom of God suffers violence and you will violently take it by force. See, this is spiritual violence, righteous indignation. Hallelujah. You will take it by force with your divine spiritual tood. It is in there in your holy identity. And you can choose to use it. You step out with a little faith. It'll, it'll come up. It'll some rocket. Believe me, it will. Wants to. Mm. Just stand up and ignite it. Start to express yourself by representing spirit and who you are will rise up. Oh, yes, it will. And if it's saying right now, oh, no, not you, good time to start the conversation. Oh, really? Well, here I am. I'm talking and you're not. Hallelujah. I'm demonstrating my divine spiritual to back up. Amen. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent shall take it by force. Matthew eleven twelve. 12. Well, I'm saying without the violence, you're not going to take it by force. It's going to take you like it's been taking you, talking all over you, creating mood swings, bipolar, coughs, cold, anything it wants to, running you around, leading you like you're some victim without authority on earth. But that is not your truth. And that's something to get pretty angry about. Amen. Amen. Agree with God. This is righteousness consciousness. Knowing that you have it, not begging for it, and not trying to milk God for a little revelation or a tidbit of power through excessive prayer and studying. Do not allow the imposter to make your rebuttal a pious and religious conversation. <laughs> Amen. No violence in that. You do not need to have addresses of scriptures or perfect recitals. You only need to know who you are and express your true identity any way that it comes out in the moment. Don't get caught up. The key is to not think about it. Rise up and roar. You may paraphrase scripture, express your heart fully, your anger, your freedom, your identity. You may threaten deception, call it out, insult it. Amen. And declare over it. Hallelujah. I like to insult it. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. You know, there was a time in my life when I used to spend all my time fasting, studying the Bible, praising God, declaring, <laughs> until one day God changed my direction with a declaration. He said, if you have so much faith, my daughter, get out of the house. <laughs> and God is saying that to you now. Stop all this. You have so much faith. Get out of the house. Demonstrate who you are. Amen. Violently rebuke and rebuttal, and that will bring your spirit up. Get out of the house. Take some territory. Amen. For me, it had all become works. It was okay in the beginning when I was a babe in Christ, but the season didn't last long. Amen. There was a moment when I had to let go of all my works, all of it, and trust life, trust God. Walk by faith. Let go and let God. I have learned to walk into healing services with nothing. No agenda, no Bible, no pre-service praying or studying, not spending three hours in tongues. Amen. People do these things. It's all right. I would just walk into a room, stand therein, and then wait on the Lord. Amen. I've never been let down. Do not let the imposter do you any favors by talking you into a lengthy preparation. Any agenda is not led by God. Any notes of preparation is certainly not God's moment. That's an agenda. Amen. That is not the moment of God trusting God. Hallelujah. You are deceived into not allowing the Lord, the Lord to lead in the moment. Your anointing and your revelation will suffer. 
Amen. But when you test and see that you don't need all that, you just need to be willing and stand there. You know, I've had the most healing in my life when I have not only not prepared, but when I've been a little under myself. <laughs> Amen. Just, wow, have you no, know, when you have absolutely nothing. Amen. You have one of those days, you didn't sleep, whatever. You're oppressed, and you have nothing, and you don't have time to rebuttal. you got to be there at 10 o'clock in the morning, and mm, all right, you go. I have seen such healing moves when I have nothing. So God wants to show us, too, that it's not you. you know, there's nothing I could do if I go there and think I'm all that, and I prayed all day and all night, and I'm anointed, and I did tongues for two hours, and I read every scripture in the Bible, and I confessed, and I stood and prayed with my family and friends about it. Is that going to make me a superior healer? <laughs> There's really nothing I could do anyway, is there? So it's better to just go and give it to God. Hallelujah. You're the higher vessel. You may not feel it, but in God's eyes, he's going to move through you. When you have nothing, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. It's shocking. There's nothing you can do anyway, beloved. So just let go. Faith lets go and allows God to lead. Let go and let God. Amen. This is the end of chapter 10. We've gotten through a chapter without any computer interruptions. I consider this a miracle. And I thank you, Jesus, for it. I just thank you, my Father. I thank you, Jesus, that my brothers and sisters, they have had an impartation of righteous indignation, a demonstration of how to confront fear, how to confront who they are not, how to stand up with their divine spiritual tooth and give the imposter of their identity a verbal beating. And I thank you, my Father, that there's, and I know that their spirits, I agree with you, will rise up and they will step out and take some territory and you will be showing them the territory that you want them to take in that demonstration. They will see. They will see it. You will show it where they have bowed. Oh, what a shock it is. Hallelujah. I just thank you, my Father, that these bows are about to end. In Jesus' name.